Today I want to talk about how to get smarter just for the sake of enjoying life. A very long time ago, I was hanging out with an older Korean man. I think he's in his mid-40s. He was in his mid-50s. I'm not sure because I can't really tell Korean people's age perfectly or anyone's age that well, to be truthful. And I didn't ask him his age because, you know, for me, it's kind of impolite to ask someone their age. So I didn't know exactly how old he was, but no matter, me and him were talking and we we're having a good time and we we're kind of getting drunk and we we're going on and on and on. And we started talking about, I don't know, traveling, politics, whatever it is we're talking about. Finally, we hit the subject of the Iraq war. And I gave him this 10 to 20 minute rant about what I thought about the Iraq war and I didn't like it and it's bad for this reason, it's bad for that reason. Uh, this is why America did it. And I think for him, it was kind of interesting what I was saying because, you know, I'm an American and I have this American perspective on things. And uh, so he's sitting there nodding, kind of looked like he's genuinely listening. And then finally, when I was done with this rant, he just looked at me and he asked me, how do you know this? And the way he said it, I thought he was about to attack me. I mean, not attack me, but I thought he was going to argue with me and like he was actually pro-Iraq war and um, things like that. But it turned out he was just really curious how I knew it. He was like, how could you possibly know all this information? And I think in the end, he actually kind of just wanted to know what was the book that I read, where I got all this information from. You know, he wanted to know how he can take that information that I had, that he wanted as well, and how he can get it into his head and then be able to, I guess, recite it for other people to maybe look smart or kind of feel cool or whatever it was. But he just wanted to know, how did I know it? And the way that I knew it was by just following the news for 15 years. Um, I've always been interested in politics and, and current events and things like that. And I have certain reporters that I, uh, I shouldn't say reporters, but like news hosts and news programs that I watch a lot and I get their opinions. And then I read maybe some blogs or maybe some news articles. I take in all these different sources, shove it in my head, rattle around all this information. I think about it myself and go like, that's a dumb idea. Or I think about it and think, well, that's a good idea. And then I try to find a counter perspective from a uh, opinionated journalist or news person of some sort and, and hear what they have to say. And then I agree or disagree with them. And I won't 100% agree with anyone or 100% agree with uh, the counter to whatever that first person says. And I'll just have my own ideas and then I'll, I'll, uh, say them to whomever will listen. And then maybe the person I'm saying it to will have their own ideas and will argue and maybe they'll change my mind, but probably not because I'm a stubborn asshole. But that's the general way of, of obtaining knowledge kind of for the sake of obtaining knowledge. Like, I think a lot of people ignore this basic thing we need in life. There are very obvious basic things we need in life like food, sex, uh, safety, like as far as shelter goes, making sure that nobody drops a bomb on our heads, making sure that, uh, you know, we don't get stabbed in night, at night in the streets. Those are the very, 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 very basic things that everyone wants. And it's very easy to understand why. But then there are some other basic things that everyone wants, which is like, oh, like one, like a fit body. You know, it's nice to have a fit body, not just sexually, not just to sexually attract other people to make them think you look handsome or pretty, but also just because it feels good. It's a basic thing that humans like. You feel good if you're able to run 100 meters in you know x amount of time and you just want to feel healthy and and alive and it's it's our body is this container that that that's carrying our consciousness and that's the other thing we need to exercise and feel good about is our consciousness is our thinking and it's one of those things that we prioritize very lowly in life because number one it's kind of hard and difficult just like exercise for your body which is hard and difficult but has a really nice reward in the end exercising your brain can also have can be hard and difficult but has a lot of rewards in the end because it's just one of those basic things that all humans want. We want to have knowledge, we want to understand the world around us, and we're just born as these curious entities that, that are fulfilled when we have more knowledge of what's going on around us. And I think that style of thinking that I'm talking about, where you take in many, many sources, mix it around your head, form your own opinions, fight with people about it, change your opinion, modify it, come back and fight again with whomever, blah, blah, blah. <sighs> I don't think it's as common in Korea as it is in America. And now I feel really bad because man, almost in every video I make, I get accused of being a racist and that's just part of giving out your opinions on the internet. But um, I'm really picking up on a real stereotype here. Like Asian people are these like robots who just take in information and spit it out. And we Westerners are these uh, um, 
romanticized kind of creative thinkers and uh, you know that's why we think the way we think and and you know poo poo on the Asian people but it's not that at all I mean it's it's the the truth is is that we're just it's it's our education system it's the way we're taught from a very young age versus the way Korean people are taught from a very young age let's be real education in Korea is basically a, a competition to sort out which hierarchy, where you're going to be in the hierarchy in your life. Who's going to be the Baksanim and who's not? Who's going to be the Isanim? Who's going to be the, the Sajangnim? Who's going to be the Kyosunim? Who's going to be that? Who's going to be what? Well, we'll do it through this crazy fight that everyone does between the ages of, I don't know, 10 and 17 or 8 and 17 or whatever the minimum age is for shoving your kids into Hagwon so that they can start the competition until that time you pass, take, and Sunung and get into college. And this is, is okay, well, it, it is advantageous, advantageous for getting into a higher tier in this game that we're all playing as humans in life. Like, a Korean person does, can do very well on, let's say, the GREs because they know this style of, of, of taking in information, which is go to a hagwon, find that something name who's been teaching GREs for 20 years, know everything about the GREs, knows everything, and G, by the way, GREs are the tests you take to get into American graduate school, knows everything about the GREs, knows how to teach it, has taught many, many students, and then the student who's been practicing for Sunung for at least one year, maybe three years, is really good at taking in direct information and regurgitating on a test, and then they do very well on a test. And when that person's competing against uh, an American who, trust me, in America, we also have that ideal of like, just taking information, just try to pass that test because you need to pass that test to get into a good college. That definitely exists in America as well. It's just not nearly as strong. So the Korean person is much better at doing that and they might end up beating the American person and getting into a better graduate school, which gets them into a better position in life, which you know, puts them higher up in that hierarchy. So there is some advantage to doing education and, and, and learning knowledge in that way. But the problem is that knowledge I think gives you almost no enjoyment. Learning how to do trigonometry so you can do well in Sunung gives you almost no enjoyment. The real enjoyment you want is the kind of knowledge you get from your own curiosity, from, like I said, taking in many sources, rattling around your head, arguing, and just the argument part, just the learning part. Those parts are enjoyable in themselves as well. And in Korea, it's very much less emphasized because most of your education is just about the competition and Secure that place in the hierarchy and then figure that out, that stuff about enjoying life later. Once, once you become the baksa and you have your wife or husband and you have your kids and you have your house, then sort out how to be happy in life. Whereas in American education system, far more than Korean education system, we're taught like this is how you have to you have to think. You have to think this mad method of taking a bunch of sources, rattling them around your head. And then, and then having your own opinion, arguing with people about it, and you know, possibly enjoying the arguments and enjoying that part. And, and I think it does lead to us having a little more creativity in certain ways. And it does lead to us so that when we do get to whatever position we end up in life, when we're 30, 35, 40, whatever it is, and our life is kind of a little more settled and we're kind of outside the competition and we have to think, what am I gonna do with, our life, with my life? It's a natural fit for us to keep going on with this style of thinking and knowledge. Whereas for Korean people, I think it's far less obvious end goal. And the Korean person ends up not doing a lot. And I think it ends up making the Korean person a little less happy. So my main point is, is that once you're done with education, once you've got your job, once you're outside of the competitive mix of, of it, that education is, and it's not just in Korea, education is also competition in America, but of course it's far more in Korea. But once you're outside of that mix, once you're outside of that competitive idea of what education is, I want to say that the best way to get happiness from knowledge is to take in many sources, find things that you're curious about, let them rattle around in your head and, and argue with people and all that stuff. And don't just look for that authoritarian Sun Tseng Nim, for that guy who wrote that one perfect book about the Iraq war so then you can have the Iraq war knowledge and then you'll be able to present it to people. That's not the point. The point is to come up with your own ideas and reasons and to be able to give it out and have a good fun discussion with somebody else about it and i hope that this video has helped uh, impress that idea the the need for that idea and and helped you realize that this is kind of a good way to get enjoyment out of life is to get 
It's to learn some things for just the sake of learning them because it gives you happiness. So if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you hate this video, give it a thumbs down. If you love me or hate me, hit the subscribe button. Um, please leave comments. Comments are one of the ways that we can have this mix of ideas and, and knowledge and, and get fun out of knowing stuff. So please leave comments. Uh, whether you're for or against me, of course, leave comments, please. Remember these videos come out every Friday at 7 p.m. So if it's after 7 p.m. and it's a Friday, there's a new video coming out and you should check it out. And of course, remember, have a super most awesome day.